All right. Um, hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be standing on this very spot. You know, I've seen a lot of TEDx events, and I'm so excited to be here today. Okay, let's start this way. Um, while I was, while we were driving down here, I asked one of my colleagues, or when we even got here, I asked him that, has he ever been called a freak? And then he said, couples of time. So uh, has anyone ever called you a freak before? Someone has called you a freak. <laughs> okay, if you've not been called, a, have you been called a weirdo before? Yes. Okay, weirdo is another word for freak. Okay, I think I've been called that a lot of time growing up throughout my life. You know, you are a freak. You do things differently. Why are you different? Why are you not following the norms and all? And then I was always very anxious growing up because I didn't, I didn't even realize what was actually different about me. I felt like I was. Um, like a normal kid growing up and all. But um, luckily for me, I think a story changed my life. While I was in secondary school, I remember I used to be the class captain when I was in secondary school. And um, I used to select those that would represent my class every Friday for a debate. And then one day, the guy that was supposed to represent my class ran away because he was very anxious. And then my principal told me that, okay, since you are the class captain, you have to represent the class. And I was like, wow, you know, the table was stunned. And then I climbed on the stage, and then I was very excited, and I was just rambling, speaking grammars and the likes. To cut the long story short, after that experience, he called me into his office, and then he told me that, um, I think you can be an orator. And I was like, uh, I am better selecting those that will represent than being a, an orator, you know. Just let me select, I know. And um, he said, no, I think, I said, ah, sir, people don't understand my English and all. I'm like, okay, we can actually, to cut the long story short, I started representing my schools in debates. And then throughout my stay in secondary school, I represented my school in debate competitions from state to federal. When I also entered university, I continued on the same path. And then I realized something, that I was not a freak. And um, I was not a weirdo. I am just a young creative with a different perspective of how um, I see the world. And that is what creativity is all about. Creativity is all about you seeing a dot. You know, a normal person <coughs> sees a dot, but creative sees different dots. And then when you connect those different dots together, that is when you have a creative expression. Um, let me tell you a story of Vincent van Gogh. How many of us know Vincent van Gogh here? He's um, renounced as the father of art, modern art. He died as a, very, as a poor man. And before his death, he painted over 2,000 artworks. And he never sold one piece of his art. And that was in the, in the, in the, in the 18th century. In the 19th century, I think around 1930 or so, one of his artworks was sold for $75 million. That is about 30, million, 30 billion era in, in Nigerian's currency. And when you look at that story, someone who painted over 2,000 artwork but never sold one piece till he died. He died a poor man. But after his death, they started collecting on his work and they sold it at museums, at different auctions, and his work has transcended beyond generations and the likes. So this is where I want to start today's talk from. And um, when we talk about creativity, art for gold. You know, many people, whenever um, people approach me, how can I be a creative? I want to be a creative. Um, what do I need to do to be a creative? And then I tell them that creativity is not something you learn. Creativity is inborn. And the funniest part of it and um, the bitter truth is that all of us are creative. It all depends on um, what exactly we are about to create. When you create, then you become a creative. Every one of us here, by the virtue of our presence here today, I'm sure we are a creative because the purpose that drive, that drive us down here today is for us to be able to use this medium for a purpose. And that purpose is what being a creative is all about. So thank you, that is my introduction. So let's go over my slide. While I was pre uh, preparing this slide, I actually had two. 
but I had to um, go with the one with less pictorial um, presentation. So let's, let's see what I, I have here. So step four, young creatives. I'm sure many of us want to be rich as creatives. We have a lot of photographers here. Um, there are a lot of writers that are part of the um, organizing committees and all. And we have a lot of graphic designers, a lot of um, poets, dancers, and the likes. But one thing many people don't realize is the moment you don't make money or you're not making money out of what you're doing, many people drop the idea of being a creative. And there is a myth called the hungry man myth. According to, um, let me say, chronology, creatives are not meant to be rich. I'm sure that will sound like, what are you saying? Creatives are not meant to be rich. That is the hungry man myth. Because creatives from history are people who find joy in what they do. And then they express through different means. For a painter, you know, he sees colors, he sees a canvas, and he starts painting and the likes. He doesn't care whether someone likes that painting or someone doesn't like that painting. All he wants to do is to paint a picture, and at the end of the day, that gives him joy. But um, over time, particularly since the 90s and then the 2000s, we are lucky that we have found a generation that actually um, now pay for creative expressions. People pay as much as 5,000 Naira, 10,000 Naira to watch a whiskey show, a Davido show, and uh, people pay as much as $1,000 to actually um, contract a graphic designer for a job. People pay as much as $2,000 to call a, uh, a photographer. The reason is because we are lucky that the generation that we are now found purpose in paying young creatives. But according to history, creatives are not meant to um, be rich. But the major reason why that idea, I'm sharing that idea is because when you imbibe that idea into your lifestyle or into your, um, your beginning, it gives you less pressure. When the money is not coming, you are not under the pressure of, okay, I'm not making money right now, what should I do? Am I not finding the purpose? All you just have to do is what, continue to be on the path of what you're doing until you are sure that one day there's going to be someone that's going to come for whatever you're doing. I would like to go to the last slide so as not to bore you guys. Um, to be a creative is to be weird. What do I mean by that? Um, to be a creative is to be weird because many a times what you see is not what everyone sees. While we were in university, I was um, actually happy when he was talking about the fact that he started his um, business expression when he was in school. While we were in school, I think that was in 200 level, we started an initiative um, called Imagine Cinemas. And how did this start? When, we enter, when I entered the university, you know, I had this idea of cream de la cream, you know, school is supposed to be um, fun, party today and the likes, but the university I was admitted to, the Federal University of Agriculture, Bekuta, <laughs> <laughs> was relatively very dull. I mean, very dull. And um, week in, week out, throughout my under level, you know, I find um, out that people complain, you know, week in, week out. Ah, this school is even dull. There's nothing fun about this school and everything. And then we, I just thought, like, okay, um, why don't we, you know, find a way to change the narrative? And then we started an idea called Imagine Cinemas. We started showing movies with projectors and, um, you know, even pr borrowed projectors and all. But over time, you know, after um, our first show, which was free, we started charging people as much as, as small as 100 Naira. People started paying, we're having about three, three audience in the hall. The days when we have 20, 20 people in the hall, we're always grateful that, wow, people turned up. Gradually 50 audience, gradually 100, 100 audience in the hall. And then uh, fast track to 2008, you know, we partner with a cinema to show a Hollywood movie. We brought a professional projector to school, and then we showed our first um, professional Nollywood movie with a professional projector for 300 Naira, and the turnout was very massive. And we're like, wow. So we can actually make as much as this, you know, showing pictures to students. And then in 2019, we bought our first professional projector for over 10 million Naira, and then the story changed. Now, we show movie in FNAB, Babcock, 
UI, Elorin, you know, we even handle private screen for multinationals like UBA, Zeni Banks, and the like. And there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of um, 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 multinationals that also invite them to their house to come and show movies and all. What, where am I driving to? The reason why we did that was not because we were after the money. It was because we wanted to change the narrative, which was very important. We saw that the school was very boring, and then we wanted to add a little bit of spice with the little resources that we had. And today, the company is now, let me give you the valuation. <laughs> so um, the second point is, to be a creative is to have the desire to change the narrative. I think when we started Imagine Cinemas, Imagine Cinemas, um, sorry, Create Ninja, Create Ninja started during the pandemic. During the pandemic, um, we, we did not have the chance to show movies because there was restrictions and everything and all. And then uh, I, I, we thought that, okay, what could we do? Because now, you know, there's no screening and then uh, we are gradually turning broke. We're actually, you know, we're, we're literally broke. And then we thought, okay, what can we do? Um, then the idea came that, okay, let's, let's start um, a creative agency. Let's try and see how we can connect um, different creatives together. Let's see if we can bring this creative here, this creative there, this creative there. During the holiday, during the coronavirus, I got a lot of remote jobs. I was lucky to get a lot of remote jobs. I know that were paying me $100, $200, $300 and all. And I was like, okay. And then whenever my clients want to give me jobs, they ask that, okay, do you have someone who does this, who does that? And I was like, okay, why can't I bring all these creatives together? I know. And then that was how we started the whole creative agency. We started from Abiyokuta. Now we are in over 30 campuses. And then now we are in six countries. We're in Nigeria, we're in Ghana, we're in Kenya, we're in Syria alone, we're in Uganda, and we're in USA. 2022, we're planning to expand to four other African countries. That is we trying to change the narrative. Now, by changing the narrative, it doesn't mean um, we just want to start listing statistics. What changing the narrative is all about is making sure that you are influencing people's life. You are creating a legacy that will pass the test of time. The next point is um, to be a creative is to be playful with your imagination. You know, when I was growing up, yesterday when we came into town, um, I and a colleague, um, we, were going, we, we, we went to my house and then I was showing him that, okay, when I was young, due to um, peer pressure and the likes, that is the mountain where I always go and read and write because I'm a writer. I know. Whenever I'm trying to um, relate with other students that, okay, let's write this, let's write that, let's work on this project. Everyone is always feeling like, well, what are you talking about? This does not work. Uh, how, can you be a, um, how can you be a writer and say you want to make a living out of it? But I am telling you, for every um, multinational, for every organization, if writing is not the basis of the organization, then the organization is bound to fail. I don't know if you all understand. If writing is not the basis of the organization, then the organization is bound to fail. Because as um, um, a CEO or an MD or a founder of, a, of, of an organization, you have to write uh, proposals, you have to write code emails sometimes, you have to write um, letters to um, brands. If you are a young startup looking for sponsors and the likes, you have to write a lot of letters and the likes. And whether you like it or not, as simple as it may look, there are many people that before they accept your letter or before they actually um, give sponsored um, um, grant or money to you, they check the contest of your paper. If they say that it's not right or it's not complete or it doesn't make sense, they throw it, they throw it out. So if you think writing is not easy or it's not, it's not, it's not important in building a brand, then you need to have a think. So um, to be a creative is to be yourself. Uh, while I was growing up, you know, I wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> I can't imagine being a doctor right now, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be very funny. It's going to be very funny. But am I still a doctor? Yes, because um, right now, I, I have the chance of um, treating a lot of creatives. Last year, I was able to work with a lot of creatives that were going through depressions, going through a lot of um, uh, hard times. Many people that felt like they were not doing well academically, but they had other gifts, they had other talent, they had other skills. So me being a doctor meant me treating them and me telling them that, yes, you can still survive. There's still a chance for you. With your creative gift, yes, you can still make something out of life. Something meaningful can still come out of 
um, whatever the God-given talent God has given to you. And um, we are still in the process of rehabilitating a lot of creatives and uh, we, we're trying to let them know that, yes, the gift that you have, the talent that you have, the creative expression that you, you've chosen can still put food on your table. So I am still a doctor. So, um, to be a creative, to have the desire to tell your story. If I was not a creative, I would not be standing here today to tell my story. And um, story matters a lot because story is how we connect with the world and how we tell the world that, yes, there was something that has been done. And then story is not all about the past sometimes. Some, story, some stories are yet to be told. Some stories are a work in the process. There are many people that whenever I check their WhatsApp to they tell you that, yes, I believe 2022 is my year. They are already writing their stories. So whenever I see stories like that, I want to implore you, if you feel like you can jump on a train of a storyline that can connect, please find every means possible to jump on the train. I think my time is almost up. To be a creative is to change the world, to create a legacy. Um, I would like to end that by applauding um, the convener of this event, uh, which is Body Maxwell, because um, I met him through creative expression. We used to work together when we were in school, and then we did a lot of um, creative work together. And then when he, he actually reached out that, okay, I would like you to be one of the speakers, I, I did not doubt that he could do it, because that was his, um, that has always been his drive. And while we were in school, there are a lot of people that actually look at him like, okay, this guy is just a, a bookworm and all. But today, like he said, this is the first TEDx Oluyole, right? Yes. Will history remember it? Yes. Are you sure history will remember it? Yes. I think that's enough. Thank you.